All right, so you're looking at FJ Dynamics here, right? FJ Dynamics, uh, this is the RTK unit. Uh, this thing triangulates between the satellites and the tractor. The unit that I have does not, it has to have this thing here. Without this thing here, I can't do anything because above me, I have no free RTK uh, service. As a matter of fact, there's no RTK service from satellites up above me that will interact with the SIM card that I've got in the unit there. Trimble claims they do, but they want $1,600 to tap into it. So for $1,600, I'll just use this little guy here that makes everything super accurate. Now, I'm on top of <coughs> the one grain tank. The big grain bins there and this is just like 1800 or 2000 bushels uh, yesterday I spent the day spraying soybeans and yesterday and the day before those soybeans out there I did the day before everything here actually I did the day before that field right there was a replant I don't know why it's funny because that field was planted the same day as the field below the field below was perfect uh, the next fields over below my parents house the middle field is a replant the bottom field not a replant all the same variety senseless to me why it was that way i have no idea um but anyways we sprayed this and then i had to go back to corn or i had to move over to corn because i went and inspected my corn and it was about yesterday morning and maybe this time it was about a quarter inch uh shoot coming to come up through the uh through the ground it's a meta whatever I can't remember the technical term for that for that shoot that comes up and then becomes the first leaves a med meta some damn thing meta codal meta or whatever the hell they call it anyway um, they were about a quarter of an inch then yesterday afternoon when I got over to spray the first tank um, they were three quarters of an inch they had grown a half an inch in that short amount of time just in a few hours last night when I finished up the first corn that I planted uh, I put a post on Instagram one lonely farmer on Instagram and that post I took my finger and I'm telling you it was this it was a, it was an eighth of an inch to a 32nd of an inch from coming through the soil and I did spy a couple of them that had popped through now of course my tank mix says before emergence well it hadn't opened up yet or it hadn't ruptured that to begin to leaf out so I'm okay I was safe enough now I'm going to go spray the last corn that I planted which was two days later a day and then two days later so I've dug that up yesterday afternoon and it had a quarter inch sprout on it or a quarter inch shoot coming up and that was uh, yesterday afternoon so it is a day behind uh, that is spread or planted through all of the wonderful and this is my view by the way uh, that was all the wonderful uh, hay that I I planted through soybeans should be emerging through that that Teresa planted it's looking pretty darn good actually all right let's do a live dig um, put the nitrogen down I don't know sometime last week maybe it was Monday I think it was Monday Sunday or Monday I put the nitrogen down on this might have been a little bit before that uh, planted it on Thursday I can see that the the grass crop or the hay crop has picked up the nitrogen which is exactly what I wanted it to do uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually go ahead and do a bit of a live dig here where everybody can see what's going on. So, I'm sure there's some interest in this. You know what, maybe I will turn it around this way so that the sunlight isn't an issue. Uh, yeah, what the hell, there's no spray on this. Okay, so we got our slot right here. All right, their slot is, I, you're gonna have to trust me. I know, I know it's hard to believe that a 50 year old corn planter could actually make a slot that tight so what I do is I come in from the side like that and I'll just cut through the root mass it seems to be the best great, great way to go and I see nothing okay which is fine let me uh, let me get you here maybe maybe you can see that just a little bit better oh wait 
I do see something. All right, so here it is. I didn't damage it. That right there. Can you see it? Right there at the tip of my finger. Where's my finger? Right there at the tip of my finger. Hold on a second. That is how close this is to coming up through the ground. All right. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if I've got it right, I should have another one. Like, I've got them at 30,000 plant population because of the reduced amount of nitrogen that I'm using. I'm going to put more acres in with less, um, yeah, where the hell is that thing? What we do have a skip? Could have had a skip there, which wouldn't surprise me. You know, it is a 50 year old corn planter, by the way. Um, yeah, where the hell is that thing? Not there? Should be about there. Well, let's see. Uh, did I just rip it out? I think I did. Where the hell are you? There it is. So there he is, right there. Right there. That one's a little bit delayed. That's pretty much to be expected with no-till farming anyway, is to have an uneven emergence, but for the most part, it don't take long for them to catch up once they come through the ground. Oh, I know last night when I was spraying, I could swear I saw some poking through, which would lead me to believe, and that's like, that one that is delayed is the first one that I saw. I did a little bit more digging in that field over there on the other side of the, on the other side of those. Uh, there's a driveway there where those poles are. Uh, I did some digging there and let me tell you, every one I dug was within a quarter to three eighths of an inch to, to a quarter of an inch ready to come through the ground. Okay, I'm gonna have to get going again. I'll just, throw you all up here like this. Ready? Uh, you like that, Neil? Looks good for my house. If you can hear me, I'm putting down 21 gallons. Um, normally I do just 20 gallons, but sometimes when you speed up and slow down, It'll be 19 gallons, then it'll be 21 gallons, and I'm really looking for 20 gallons. So I'm pretty sure I've got it leveled out or, or evened out. soybeans that are in the ground you can see I've got the uh, 1100 navigator with the 60 foot boom I'm not running the 90 footer today Timothy's running that with fertilizer for corn as we're trying to get things planted and trying to get things sprayed and trying and trying and trying and trying uh, there's some people out there that were kind of poking fun at Zach the millennial farmer and I tell you, the struggle is real. If you didn't, if you think it's not, you're crazy. Uh, the struggle is real. Real. Electronics can really screw up your day. Like as you can see right now, this thing actually malfunctioned. Uh, I don't know why, but it just put me into the old map for the when I put the compost down. It makes no difference at all. I know how many acres are on this farm. It's 42.26 acres. It might climb up a little bit as it fills in those little gaps, but for the most part, that's the only hiccup that I've had today with electronics. This thing here, which runs that thing there, I've never run this monitor before. Last year, Cody did most of the spraying. Timothy and Cody did the spraying with this sprayer, and quite honestly, it just, I, it, it, I never had to use it. 
Um, I just never had to use it. It's very simple to use. As a matter of fact, it's too simple to use. I was overthinking it <laughs> and uh, couldn't, the more I played with it, the worse it got until, oops, well, that's close. Uh, the more I played with it, the worse it got. Wow, you can't really see that in there. Uh, so as it got progressively worse, I was like, this is, there's something wrong. It's, it, it can't be. It can't be the computer, it's got to be me. So I went to YouTube, and Hardy actually has a really good crash course on this 2500, this HC 2500 uh, monitor. This one was a little bit older than the one that they were showing, but that's okay because, quite honestly, this one has all the instructions you need right there. You just don't keep pushing the button like this. Stop pushing the button like this. Just let it do its thing and it works. And then you just kind of clear out and everything goes back to where it was. I had this thing in a calibration mode and I'm like, I don't even know how to get it out. So I was busy playing with that, cussing and swearing, you know. Uh, not as bad as Zach was though. I mean, I gotta tell you, I feel bad for him. I gotta do this because I have a boom out in the road. It's no fun when you've got all this high-tech equipment, and I don't have high-tech equipment. Thankfully, the things that I run are quite low-tech. Uh, I know what he's talking about when he's complaining about the... When he was complaining about uh, sensors and wires and stuff, believe it or not, this thing actually has quite a few sensors on those booms, and... Um, there's a hydraulic uh, solenoid that is sensed. You send it through this unit here, and I don't know, I was having a little bit of trouble with it, so no big deal. Uh, it just, no big deal. It just does what it does. But if you're wondering what I'm actually applying, it's secret sauce and glyphosate. Yep, secret sauce and glyphosate. I'm using the secret sauce uh, as a surfactant, which it is, it is a stiction agent, man. This stuff is like, I don't know, napalm. So, I was watching Cole the Corn Star the other day, and he said that he wasn't going to spray in the evenings because the plants shut down for the night and there's no photosynthesis, which he is quite correct. Um, but this does not need photosynthesis to work. Uh, it translocates into the uh, into the uh, plant by the surfactant breaks down the wax and it goes into the plant. Now, the plant doesn't put it into the roots until tomorrow when the sun comes up and photosynthesis starts to take place, but it is in the plant. Now, the, uh, the secret sauce that I'm using, which I am not going to reveal, I'm just not going to do it. Those that know, know, and they know better than to uh, say what it is because I threatened their lives. Not really. But anyway, yeah, so that secret sauce is going to make it stick to the plants. I had a lot of negative comments. I mean, there's always negative comments when it comes to me, and it's okay. It's, it's quite all right. I, I really don't mind too terribly bad. If you don't think what I'm doing is right, don't do it. That's all there is to it. Just don't do it. Because if you don't do it, you'll never know. Uh, if you have done it, maybe you've done it in a different manner and it didn't work for you, which, you know, that's highly likely, you know, very highly likely. It, it could have happened like, oh, well, I did it this way and bada bing, bada boom, it didn't work out for me. So I'm going to have to, you know, do something slightly different. Well. Man, I'm just catching that perfect. Anyway, yeah, this thing's just painting away. Um, I really like this auto steer system, by the way. Um, I really, I really do. So, if you guys are interested in one of these things, I, I would highly recommend it. I haven't, in the beginning, I had a little bit of learning curve stuff going on, but for the most part, once the learning curve was met and everything was good. Uh, this thing is working legendary. 
<laughs> I should just say legendary. It's working really well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the next field and I'm going to dig up the soybean. Teresa planted these, I think, four days ago, three or four days ago. I dug one up. It's got a root on it. It's pushing up through the soil. It'll probably be up through the can through the soil in two more days. Uh, as you know or may not know, when you plant green, the soil temperatures stay colder. Uh, they just stay colder, and there's nothing wrong with them staying colder. Uh, what it does is it uh, keeps the microbial activity alive. The microbes are alive and doing really well in the cooler, cooler soil. And, and I've said this before, and I, I won't say it too many more times, but I've said it before, uh, cool, cool soils are better or healthier soils, believe it or not. Uh, hot soils kill your microbes. They do. Fun, mycorrhizal fungi and all that stuff die in hot soil. So what I'm going to do, and I'm running out of time, but because I've got GPS, it doesn't much matter. I'm going to do a live dig. Okay? Now, yeah, I'm going to do a live dig. So we'll walk on out here. She went this way on this side and this way. These are the, she sealed up the ends. And you can see how that, the openers cut this like a lawnmower. And you don't see any seeds on top of the ground. Oh, there's one. Is that one popping? No, that one's, yeah. That sucker's even got a sprout on. Okay, so you see a seed on top of the ground. Just one. Uh, let's see what we can find. I want to get out here just, just a little bit. So here it is. This is the ground. This is the damn dirt or soil. You can see the root masses. Look at that. You know what that root mass is doing for me? If you didn't know, maybe I just won't talk about it. I, I tell you, there's a lot of people out there just hating on me right now. And I'm okay with people. Soybeans are such a pain in the ass, especially when you're digging through this shit to get to them. Okay. We should be able to see these seeds. They're pink. They've got a, uh, oh, let's see, maybe they, yeah, I'm far enough where to, oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. That is not the root of the soybean. This is the root of the soybean. So there it is. Three days ago or four days ago, that was planted. Four days ago. I don't know, something like that. Let's see if it survives. So, somebody was saying that there's no way I'm going to get Roundup to go all the way through to the canopy, through the canopy and kill everything. Um, I've got hemp dogbane here. Hemp dogbane is extraordinarily difficult to kill with glyphosate or Roundup. Uh, the reason being is it's got hairs on it, very hairy, hairy leaves, and water droplets roll off. That's why you need to use a heavy surfactant type spray adjuvant and that what that does then is it it actually gets in there and breaks down the wax or the hair on that uh, I'm running 20 gallons to the acre with this and 20 gallons to the acre with my secret sauce and my uh, the spray adjuvant that's actually in the glyphosate is tit. Oh. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and hit the continue button. And we're just gonna go. And that'll get that ditch, hopefully. I may have to exit out of that. I'm gonna spray that damn ditch though, because it's got too much too much life in there. I mean, I don't really want to spray it though. So yeah, so anyway, I want to spray the ditch, but I, I want to leave a little bit of vegetation there. Uh, anyway, uh, with, the, with the secret sauce, it's going to stick to those things. I will show you when I'm done, maybe, if I got light. I will show you that that stuff is stuck to it or on it. Um, and you're just going to like what I'm doing or not like what I'm doing. And, I just don't seem to care one way or the other anymore. If you don't like what I'm doing, I'm, I'm not sorry. I, I... So with water droplets on these types of things like that, I believe is mare's tail. Mare's tail is a cocksucker to kill, right? So I've got the right amount of 
Roundup or glyphosate to kill that. Um, even with the surfactant that you put on, as the water dries up and dissipates the Roundup or the product on a plant like that, and like this one here, which is very difficult to kill, will dissipate and the glyphosate will just sit on the hairs of these plants and it won't translocate very well. So a good heavy dose of surfactant or this secret sauce that I use. The secret sauce that I use will not, will not, let me repeat that again, it will not evaporate. It will not dissipate. Tonight when the dew sets on these plants it will, it will dry out and then it will rehydrate and go down through the veins of that plant and it is definitely going to kill this no matter what any of you naysayers say i just go about your day and i hope you enjoyed this in video and uh yeah things are high speed i got i got tim potato he is he is running he tim potato is running a uh the other sprayer uh, yeah. so he's running the other sprayer and i'm trying to do a better job of my corners I'm, I'm generally not that great about doing corners I'll just let the booms swing away swing away Merrill swing away and when I do that uh, it doesn't do a very nice job so we're just trying to do a very nice job and um, yeah just make it look good and I'll have weed free corners and weed free soybeans because I think that I'm the, the guy that commented that I'm not going to get enough penetration into through this canopy of grass is wrong I, I'm just saying it now I think he's wrong if he's right if he's right that I didn't get enough penetration then I will have to come back over these beans again with more glyphosate, which is perfectly fine. Um, I'll just come back with another dose of secret sauce as well, just a lighter dose, um, because anytime you put a grass under stress, it will it will feed the soil. And I've had my time with the stressed grass. It's almost like a uh, almost like a grazed field if you look at it less the urine and manure um, but I put on the compost so the urine and manure is there technically in a different form but quite happy with that but doesn't it look like she mowed that I mean those beans are gonna come come up through there and they're just gonna be like rocket ships flying out of the ground I'm telling you anyhow I'm going to go ahead and I'm not gonna square that corner the vineyards generally aren't in this area but he's been working at it um, he's been working hard very hard probably the hardest he's ever worked in his life it's the way he was working out here my dad talks to him a little more than I do but um, <laughs> he's like my dad asked him how he was doing he's like oh I'm sore you know Cause that's a big undertaking that's where Timothy plowed that's where Timothy plowed the uh, uh, what do you call them? They uh, with the little H, the little John Deere H. He plowed that uh, for him to put in his orchard. And my popcorn is going to go right there, and that's going to have to go in here in the next couple of days anyway. So, yeah, I got a lot, a lot, a lot of work to do. A lot, a lot of work to do. Uh, Teresa planted through this. This is where the compost is. And yes, those beans will come up, and they will thrive where that compost is because. This is good stuff. So, anyhow, I think I'm just about to where I need to flip off my sprayer, and I am. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna make my turn. And when I make that turn, I'm gonna kick on this bad guy, this bad boy right here, uh, which I'm thinking is going to be, let me flip that on flip that on. Oh, I didn't do it. There it goes. And it's taken off already. And I'm going to have a skipper, I think. Maybe. Maybe on the way back. I don't know. I'll have to look. Um, my target is 20 gallons. The flow rate 
is not as responsive as the valve. The valve is down there, but it goes up to 20. Um, the flow meter doesn't get, spool up as fast. I want to take it out and clean it. I've got another one, and I'm thinking that that flow meter is kind of sluggish. Might have some dirt or something on the magnets, the magnetic pickups, but it seems like it. the little flow meter valve, the flow valve is there, and it runs off the of speed. It adjusts a lot faster than what uh, than what the actual readout is saying. So, but that's okay. Anyway, I'm gonna shut this off and yeah.